What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips where we are going to be making over this little bar cabinet right here. She's a cutie, she's a sweetie, but she just needs a little love to get her looking just right. Anyways, let's get flipping! So this is the piece that we are working with today. My client wanted me to restore the finish to its original condition and of course add the Art Deco Splendor that I normally do. So we are going to be doing that for her. It's in pretty decent shape, however it does have some mold on it and it needs a deep cleaning and the finish needs to be restored. So we're going to get started on that, but the first thing we're going to do is clean out the interior and remove all of the little hinges and doodads that are on it so that we can strip off that old finish. This mirror is the original mirror and it does have some beautiful distressing on it from just normal wear and tear so my client and I just decided to keep it just because it adds a little bit of character but we're going to be removing it for now just so I can spray all of these little metal details and also paint the wood underneath. When removing the hinges, it's always a good idea to remove the lower door because, you know, if the hinge is gone, there's nothing to keep it from just falling open and just absolutely wrecking your hinges and tearing out the wood that's there. So I decided to remove the door and also that just makes it for easy stripping and painting and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, just re remove the doors. Take, take the time to do that. The original hardware for this piece is cool, however it is just a little bulky for both me and the client's taste, so we are going to be replacing those once everything is done. Before I get to the actual restoration, I wanted to see what I could do about this wobble. So all of this is mold here, so I will have to clean that for sure. But before I do anything major, I always like to take off these things. I don't like to do anything super invasive to the piece before trying these. These are really good for sturdying things up and they don't scratch the floor either. So I like to use them instead of these guys. So I'm gonna try this first, see if it works, and then hopefully that'll get rid of our wobbly problem. Wobble fixed. Easy peasy. 
To remove the finish, we are using my favorite paint stripper called Smart Strip. It's an eco-friendly paint stripper, and I'm not gonna go over it too much. If you would like a detailed video on how to exactly use and remove and clean this specific product, so make sure to check out that video after you check out this one. One thing that I will tell you guys though, when I use this product, I personally like to go like section at a time. I don't like to do the whole thing at once, even though it does save time, but I just, I don't know why I just do it this way, but yeah, that's just how I do it. I work, you know, little sections at a time. So I do like one side at a time or like this one, I'm doing both the doors at the same time, you know, just, yeah, it's just easier to work in sections like that for me personally. Again, you don't have to do that. Another beautiful thing about Smart Strip is that you can reuse the bags that you used on prior parts and just lay it over the old parts. You don't even have to worry about taking the old stripper off and it just works exactly the same. And you can clean those bags without, you know, it tearing or anything. You just clean them and they're good to go for the next time. For the chunks of missing veneer, I'm just going in with some stainable wood filler just to make sure that everything's nice and flush. I'm probably going to be painting over this part with gold, so I'm not really, you know, getting too particular on making it match. However, in case I don't go over this with the gold design, I would like to make it as close as possible to the original color of the wood. There is some veneer that is lifting as well, so I went in there with my syringe and just made sure to get enough glue in there so that the entire piece of veneer that was lifting off would be glued down. Looking back, I definitely should have put tape along the wood. That way the tape that I put over it to get it to stick down wouldn't get stuck to the wood with the glue. And I'll show you what I mean with a repair that I did later on in the video. However, once the glue was all good and in place, I went in with some painter's tape and just made sure to pull really, really hard and press down on that veneer and tape to make sure that the veneer was getting pressed down to its original position. For the inside designs, my client and I thought that black would be a really cool color to go with this piece and it would go very well in her home. So before I got to painting, I made sure to clean the surface with vinegar and water, not only to get rid of some of that mold that was peeking through, but also just to make sure that the paint had something nice to stick to. Once everything was clean, I went in and sprayed some water just to help the paint move along a little better and went to painting. For the paint, I am using Good Bones paint in the color Noir. It is such an amazing paint. Genuinely, I really, really like this paint a lot. The coverage is insane. Max, you can do three coats, but usually I only need about two and it goes on like butter. Honestly, so smooth, beautiful. Cannot recommend it enough. If you would like to try it out, make sure to check out my link in the description below and make sure to use my code for 15% off.
Once all the repairs were made, I went in with a sander and just, you know, used a really gentle 220 grit and this was able to get all of the remaining residue or any of the finish that was left on there. Unfortunately, this is where the other repair needs to happen. I didn't realize that I had missed some lifted veneer that was on this top lid here. So when I got to sanding, I accidentally just sanded off a chunk of veneer. But don't worry, I will be making that repair later on. But for now, I am sanding. So remember before how I was mentioning how I wanted to put tape down so that the glue wouldn't stick to the wood and the tape and all that sort of stuff? This is why. This is a clump of glue that was left over from a repair that I had made and I just hand sanded it until it was gone because if I did it with my power sander I would have just eaten through that veneer edge right there that I had just made the repair on. So I just went in and delicately hand sanded it. It did take me a solid 15 minutes or so to get it off, but I eventually got it off, so it all worked out. By the way, this is just your friendly reminder to always, and when I say always, I mean always, wear a mask when you're sanding. No matter what you think you are breathing in or not breathing in, I don't care if you're like, oh yeah, it's just a minor sanding job, I don't need a mask, wear a mask. Do it. You will be so grateful that you did when, you know, years down the line, you don't have health problems that other woodworkers who don't wear masks have. As you can see, I even wear my mask until I'm 100% certain that all the dust is gone and that I know that I'm not breathing in any more dust. Okay, so enough of me just trying to explain this to you. Here is what I mean. Put tape down before you glue so that the glue doesn't stick to the wood or the tape that you put down over it. So I am putting down a piece of tape to line this edge. And then I will also be putting down a piece of tape on top of it so that none of the glue that I put inside spills over and gets stuck to the tape or stuck to the wood. And that way your cleanup job is practically nothing. It's very, very minimal. And then you go in there and you don't have to worry about spillage. You don't have to worry about overfilling. It just gets nice and in there and you're good to go. Yeah. So take this tip and, and run with it, you know? Sorry about the focus here, but uh, hopefully you get my point. I'm just kind of working the glue into the little gap right here because my syringe was honestly a little too big to fit in here. But you know, we're working with what we got. And see, here is what I mean. I pull the tape hard enough to the point where it's definitely gonna squeeze out some of that glue. However, now with that tape down, I don't have to worry about it sticking to the wood or you know, having to sand it off later. It's all good to go with those two pieces of tape and it's so easy to do and saves you a bunch of time. While my repairs dried, I went ahead and sprayed down my metal pieces with some gold spray paint. For trim like this, I find it a lot easier to lean the piece up against something or put it on a table or whatever you may have. I personally don't really have a workbench 
that is good for this type of stuff, so I just lean it against the wall just to make it a little easier for me to paint. For a little tip, I just wanted to let you guys know that you can use gel stain to just go in there and kind of fix up anything kind of like, you know, blemishes and whatnot. It kind of works similarly to wood restorer because, you know, that's basically what it is. It's just a light stain. So I went in there and just kind of gave everything a little bit more life. Didn't worry about it getting, you know, super tinted or dark or like stained into that color. I just wanted to bring it some life with a touch of the gel stain in walnut. For the parts that I did sand all the way down, I went in and just used the gel stain how I normally do, applying a really thick coat of it. That way it gets into every single divot of wood grain and all that sort of stuff. And so it looks nice and cohesive. And then I just wiped back the excess. While I was finishing that, I heard the doorbell ring and I honestly had no idea what it was. And then I remembered that I am actually teaming up with Kneel It. They are a product that has these little rolling seats that you can kneel on and sit. And you know, you don't have to sit on the cold floor like me. You can just sit on them and roll around. And it's actually so much fun and super simple to put together. I did it in about 10 minutes or so and it was super easy. This thing literally is the best. I am in love with it. And now let's apply the top coat. For the top coat, I'm using a wipe on poly in a gloss finish. I really love working with this product when I'm doing bar cabinets because all it takes is just, you know, you work it in as if it's a stain. You don't like apply it like a regular top coat. You don't brush it on or anything. And if you work it in like a stain, you can avoid any brush strokes and just make sure that you get a really nice glossy finish. So something that's really annoying that you really can't see too well in this lighting, that this, this, and this 
are three different kinds of woods or just different shades of the wood or different cuts or whatever but this is like a light golden this is more like an orange and this is like a dark walnutty type of look not what we're going for so i'm gonna try to match them by staining them so to help match the wood tones a little bit, I went in there and put a little bit of gel stain into my top coat, and I had never done this before. I did look it up and I did research that you can mix stains and a top coat. You just have to make sure that they're the same base. So if you're working with an oil-based top coat, you wanna work with an oil-based stain. Same goes for water-based, so yeah. And I did that and it actually worked really well. I was really happy with the tint that I got and it applied super easy easily just like a normal top coat just like a normal stain it just yeah it worked awesome when it comes to the ratio of stain versus top coat i i'm you know I, I this is the first time i've done it before so i'm not really an expert on this but what i was reading there is no real recipe so you can't really go wrong or right here it just depends on how much of the product you want in there so i personally was just looking for a thin layer of a tint rather than, you know, to get a protective layer of stain. So I went in there mostly with the top coat product and just a touch of the stain. Once the entire piece was coated in one coat of this mixture, I went ahead and let it dry overnight so that I could see the finished result in the morning, and it turned out awesome. I was so happy with the results. Each of them still had their own individual color, however, there was just this undertone that it added that just tied everything together, which I loved. So now that the finish is all done, I went ahead and reattached the door while resting it on the other doors that were beneath it. That way I could get some support while I inserted the screws. And then once everything was all good and in place, I went ahead and painted the door with the same noir color from Good Bones. Once everything was dry, I took it inside to give it that art deco feel, but honestly, I was having a very hard time figuring out what design I wanted to do with this piece. So I figured the best way to go is just to start. So I started off with a triangular shape, working with the triangular shape of the wood grain. I thought that there was a lot of triangles and diamonds in this wood grain particularly. So I went with that and decided to complement it with a pyramid kind of scheme. I usually try to work with the wood grain that I already have because I don't want to take away from it. I only want to add to it and enhance it. So I try to work with the shapes that I see within the wood grain and this helps me get inspired for what kind of design I want to do. And then I also look online, of course, at Art Deco inspiration and everything to get a feel for what I'm going for. But for this particular design, I thought that I would really kind of just try to elevate the length of this continuous 
continuous wood grain because it is continuous. It goes from one door to another and it's just unbelievably stunning. So I really just tried to enhance the length and the gravity of this, this beautiful zebra wood. I honestly kind of wanted to do like a sunburst pattern like I've done before, but I talked with my client and she kind of wanted something a little bit more subtle for this piece. And so we went with that as well, just trying to keep it tame, but still add something unique and cool to it. And you know, sometimes you gotta you gotta lay down to to get the right angle and to uh, give your back a break and your neck and uh, your hand too. Yeah, uh, laying down's great. The next morning, I put the final coat of polyurethane on the black paint and made sure everything was protected, and then once everything was dry, it was time to put everything together. The mirror is going to be covering most of this part of the piece, so I decided just to paint the outer edge with the top coat. I wasn't too worried about underneath the mirror, it was just this outer edge that needed to be protected. To get this video done in time, I did have to do a lot of this while things were still kind of drying, so I just went in very carefully and screwed these into place just to make sure not to smudge any of the top coat that I had just applied.
All right, guys, we are heading towards the tail end of this amazing process. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you haven't yet, make sure to like, subscribe, and do all those things so that we can stay a happy flipping family. All those actions help me make this content for you guys. And if you're interested, make sure to check out my membership program. I have some awesome benefits on there for you guys, so make sure to check that out. And if you're looking for some other ways to support, I have some amazing links in the description below. So make sure to check those out as well. All right, guys. Until next time, stay flippin'.